everyone, and welcome to Brad the DM, uh, session 0 0.5. Uh, basically, from time to time, I might do these 0.5 sessions just as something, you know, to do some character building, or if there's, like, some interesting stuff that I want to do, you know, between adventures to, like, help, you know, the characters grow. <clears throat> or if I just have cool, interesting ideas that I want to put out into the ether, you know, foreshadowing character thoughts, etc. So yeah, so uh, this is point, so this is 0 0.5, uh, entitled On the Road Again. <clears throat> because basically, um, you know, we're on the road, traveling towards, you know, another bit towards, well, a large city, but we'll make, you know, a pit stop or two along the way as the adventure goes on. <clears throat> and yeah, and also really quick, uh, these cool red glasses are hopefully going to be my DM glasses, uh, basically. Just to denote, you know, Brad's a DM, Brad's not the DM. Kind of a visual cue for you. Because <laughs> I'm going to try and do that with the other characters as well, if I can find the right pieces. And I can also take them, you know, and equip them quickly and not. But anyway, uh, just a quick recap for the last session, session zero. The barn room brawl. Uh, basically, you know, our heroes were staying at a small farmhouse. The farmhouse was attacked, unfortunately burned down, and now they're escorting the farmer to the big city where his daughter lives. You know, because he needs somewhere to live. Also, he's an older guy who's considering retirement from farming anyway. So it kind of works out. Except for the whole lost all worldly possessions thing. But anyway, uh, with the recap out of the way, let's move on to the introduction. Uh, you know, like I said, this is kind of a filler episode where I take the time for more role-playing with the characters. You know, and kind of establishing who they are and what they're looking for in the world. You know, in this campaign. Yeah, and this is just a bit of fun for me. You know, maybe you guys can take some inspiration from the character ideas that I put forth here. Or, you know, not. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> and I'm um, really quick at my table. You guys, you don't have to have, you know, like a big elaborate character story. You can just be like, I like Dragonborns and I've always wanted to play, you know, a monk, whatever. Like, just go with it. <clears throat> I cannot tell you how many times I've like had cool ideas for characters and then I've gotten to game and, you know, they've changed quite a bit. <clears throat> like, um... Burgle from the Emerald Vanguard series. You know, he was supposed to be... Well, actually, he was kind of a blank slate and basically just turned into, like, kind of a parody of Shaggy Rogers, kind of a wants-to-prove-himself-a-hero thing. <sighs> and, yeah, I'm still working on that with Dar because I never really got to actually have that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, at my table, and I would say just in general, like, you don't always have to have the story figured out right from the get-go. You know, as long as you have, like, a character concept. You know, like, this person, you know, wants to attain power, fame, glory, money, etc. That's fine. You know, once you get into game and you start interacting with your friends and the DM, you know, your personality might be different than what you thought originally. And that's totally fine. So, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. But also, I will say, if you do have your own, you know, if you do have more backstory and, like, potential plot hooks, that does make it more interesting for me, because I can go, oh, hey, you know, you mentioned, you know, you, you're separated from your family, you know, maybe you'll find clues about them along the way, you know, or, um, you know, you've heard tell of this specific legend of, oh, hey, this unlimited treasure hoard in blank, you know, I can... I can sprinkle that stuff in. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But anyway, <laughs> trying to go back to my script. Uh, da -da. Oh yeah, I guess just the final short paragraph here. Um, basically, like I said, this is just a lot of you know character talking, role play, character development stuff. So honestly, if you want to skip this episode, that's totally fine. I understand. Uh, there will not be any combat, and basically, it just ends with. You know, them within sight of the next village, and 
you know, them making a plan for approaching it. Don't worry, the village is fine. You know, it's just, oh, hey, um, we're all strangers here, except for you. So maybe you should lead, and then we'll follow you. <laughs> um, yeah. So, <laughs> so that's it. So, with that out of the way, um, I will just cut into the DM's introduction and the player interaction kind of just meshed together as one, you know, thing because... You know, I don't really have a cutoff point from setup to player involvement. So, yeah. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you uh, episode 0 0.5 on the road again. Hey everyone, uh, one more quick disclaimer before I even start the whole video. I have six pages of notes to go through, so um, I'm probably going to be cutting this up into pieces as I see fit, so ideally, you know, um, at certain cutoff points, I will make those cuts, but just so you know, uh, because of the 30 minutes, you know, recording thing. <clears throat> and then second, I will try and do voices to differentiate between different characters. You know, I hear some difference, um, but also, if it's not 100% clear, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, I'm just trying to do whatever the heck I can for this, so it works. Because this is just me playtesting and role-playing and yada yada with this stuff. So I don't have to be a world-class actor or showing different characters. I just have to get across the point of, hey, these people are different. That's it. <laughs> so hopefully that comes across. Hopefully you guys like it. Hopefully you guys pick up something from it. And I will see you once I get back into character. And I do the DM introduction and the player involvement all meshed into one section. Because this is just a role-play episode. You know, we learn a bit more about the characters and, you know, some of the world around them. So, yeah, that's it. I will be back with the DM introduction and the player involvement. One section. Together. Uh, we join our party on the road traveling north and eastward. Uh, Bren knows of a small village, Nihold, uh, that he wants to warn of the bandit attack and gather some supplies for the trek to the larger city of Bayardin. I'm just gesturing just for... I'm putting the names up so you know. <clears throat> um, but yeah, where his daughter Sarah lives. Again. I'm spelling it uniquely. <laughs> so it's noteworthy. Also, those might be like highlighted, hey, noteworthy things to know of. Sorry. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> Fang leads the party, keeping an eye on the plains around them for trouble. There are small groupings of trees, but nothing should be approaching without a decent amount of warning. Darb wasn't far behind her, casually strolling. Dedeker walked with Bren as they conversed, and Ash sat on Defendor's back, reviewing her notes. <clears throat> Darb looked behind him to see the others were busy, and decided to walk faster to talk with Fang. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, that was, that was some fight last night, huh? Uh, you know, you went all in on that, so I remember not to piss you off, I guess. <laughs> uh, Fang didn't seem to really care for his thoughts on the matter. Uh, right, so you seem to know a thing or two about fighting, and, you know, I was wondering if maybe you had some, uh, like, pointers for me or something, you know? Fang kept walking, her eyes focused ahead. When she began to talk. This voice I have not practiced very much. I gotta come up with something. <laughs> I would say that you fight decently. Though to be honest, I've seen better. But you survived and that's what matters. <laughs> uh, thanks. You know, it, it was honestly, you know, my first real fight with, uh, like, you know, real bad guys. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I had a couple of normal fist fights, but, uh, you know, no, nothing like that. Where someone was looking to... Um, so, uh, so where'd you learn your stuff? You know, maybe, maybe they can teach me a thing or two. Fang stopped in her tracks and looked at Darb, seething with anger. <clears throat> I did not ask to learn. I was forced to fight or die. And at times I wish I had. She pulled her, she pulled her tunic slightly, 
showing the lower part of her neck, there was a brand on her skin, a circle with three lines in the middle. Dar wasn't sure what the symbol meant and stared at her in confusion. The others, sensing the tension, had stopped and, and left them room to talk. <clears throat> I was taken from my home as a child. I was made a... <sighs> Sorry. A slave. A gladiator. For the amusement of dark individuals. I have seen and done worse things than you can imagine, child. And I would not test my patience on the matter. Dar, <laughs> Dar was taken aback. Uh, Daedecker moved forward, a hand out to comfort her. Fang looked to him. Save your pity. I've been able to do good with these skills, killing bandits, protecting innocents these past two years. I keep my distance as a mercenary now, in case any are looking for me. Though if I do find them, I will not hesitate. She ran her hand along the grip of the grip of the axe on her back. Darb frowned, looking sadly at his feet. Uh, sorry, you know, I just, I just want to be stronger myself in case we have another fight. Fang looked him up and down. Do not seek violence, but always be prepared for it. She put a hand on his shoulder. You have your own strength in battle. Your mind and your music proved quite capable last night. Darv smiled at that. Thank you. <clears throat> Dedeker nodded, feeling the situation properly diffused. Uh, <laughs> crap, I worked on a dwarf voice. Uh, that doesn't sound like the narrator, or Fang. Uh, if we are going to be conversing, perhaps we should stop and have a quick meal. Rest our feet. Yeah. <clears throat> Then gave one last look round, then nodded. I think we'll be safe here. She walked off of the main path and found a small area of dirt. She stood arms crossed, watching for trouble as the others joined her. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> oh wait, now hold on a sec. So I guess so. I guess we're doing formal introductions now. Uh, Mr. Darb, would you like to go next? Daedecker asked, sitting out a log and grabbing some jerky from his pocket. Darb blushed at that. Uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, it, it, it's just Darb, sir. Uh, I'm not very formal, to be honest with you. Daedecker smirked at that. Uh, my apologies, and just call me Daedecker, or some nickname if you prefer. And that, of course, goes for the rest of you as well. He nodded to Fang and Brent. <sighs> Darb walked to the middle of the spot and stood before everyone. Uh, my name is Darb. It's it's the name that's been written on my necklace. He pulled a small chain up from under his shirt with a small pendant about the size of a coin on it. Uh, on one side it says Darb, and on the other is a symbol of some kind. I'm not exactly sure what it means. Dedek or Curious moved closer to see it as Darb spun it. Ash next to him, pen in hand, ready to scrawl in her book. On the back side was two cross spears laid over an axe. Uh, Daedecker stepped back as Ash quickly sketched the piece, nodding before she hopped onto Defendor's back once more. Could be a clan symbol, Daedecker mused. I'm not the most informed on orc culture, so I can't say anything for certain, but perhaps... Darb nodded. Thanks, uh, <laughs> I honestly don't know anything. Uh, you see, I wasn't raised by orcs, uh, and from what I hear, I guess I'm like, uh, half-blood, I guess? <sighs> Fang piped up at that. I have seen orcs before. You're a bit small for that kind, and not as harsh. Darb wasn't quite sure what to say to that. Uh, thanks? <laughs> Everyone laughed at that. Fang smirked and Dar blushed. Ah, uh, can I can I continue? Everyone finally collected themselves, allowing Dar to talk. Um, I was raised in an orphanage. Uh, I was left there as a baby with a note asking them to care for me. 
you know, I spent a number of years there, and once I grew up, I set out as an adventurer. Um, I've always had skill at performing, so, you know, I picked up some instruments a few years back. You know, a, a lute, uh, the pan flute, uh, and a harp. Um, uh, it, it, it just felt right, you know. Um, you know, first it was small things, like when one of the other kids was laid out with a fever, you know, I sat with him and played idly on my harp, and in the morning his condition improved. Um, you know, and I was good at uh, telling stories, you know, really absorbing people into them. You know, I, and I especially love the stories about heroes fighting monsters and saving people, and I wanted to be one myself. So, uh, you know, after getting some money together and uh, leaving town, I've just been wandering around, you know, doing good and other stuff. <laughs> Brenda motioned for Dob to continue, the others taking notice. Dob nodded. <laughs> uh, right, uh, I, I found Mr. Bren's farm, and I wanted to help him out a bit, you know, with all the work around the farm, so... I was there for about a week before y'all showed up. Darb paused, turning his back at the group. Um, <clears throat> I'd, uh, I'd, I'd had some difficulties in the last village. Uh, they weren't so nice to me, and I was worried I'd find more of the same. Tears were on Darb's cheeks. He wiped them away quickly. Uh, thanks again for letting me stay with you, you know, uh, Mr. Bren. You know, I want to repay that kindness as best I can. Bren waved a hand. It's fine, lad. I knew from the start you had good intentions, and I wasn't about to lift the cart myself when you found me. Bren looked at the others and explained. I was on the way back to the farm when my wheel broke, and he helped me to attach my spare. I found it curious how you stuck around finding different jobs to do. <laughs> Darb nodded. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've, I've done odd jobs before, and like I said, you know. Uh, Daedecker, hoping to avoid any more awkwardness, stood up. Right, well, I guess it's time I introduced myself. Uh, I go by the name of Daydecker. I'm a priest of light. Most notably within the Thor's... Norse... Within the Norse mythos. Uh, I believe in the purity of the light, and I'm wary of darkness. You know... <clears throat> Darby smiled and clapped. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a solid intro. I'll have to add some cool descriptions to mine. As the sun travels across the sky, so are we encouraged to spread the light spread light to all we come across in our own travels. And I'm simply on my own pilgrimage with young Ash. <laughs> Ash looked up from her notes and waved. Uh, you know, it's me. We met. <laughs> and back to her notes. Um, as I don't see Ash being as forthcoming, I suppose I should tell what I do know of her story, shouldn't I? Um, I don't know everything of Ash's story, so feel free to chime in as necessary, Gaydecker began. Uh, she gave a thumbs up without looking from her book. Fang held up a hand. Maybe we can maybe we can wait until she feels like telling the story herself. We'll walk and wait until we need to rest again. Gaydecker shrugged. Very well. I think I'm good for another good stretch. <laughs> Told you I'm not a great writer. <laughs> So the party continued on for another few hours of walking, before settling down for an evening meal and sleep. Darb and Fang gathered firewood for a fall, for a small fire. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Fang had caught a pair of rabbits and proceeded to cook them for the party. Bren nodded in appreciation at that. Nice work. Again, her voices drift. I'm sorry, it's roleplay. It's hard. Fang nodded in gratitude, then looked to Ash. <clears throat> Ready to tell us your story? Ash sighed and closed her notebook. <sighs> Trying to act the stuff out, too. And just using the stuff on hand. <laughs> <sighs> right. I'm going to put on my glasses for this, actually, too. Sorry. I suppose I do owe you that much. She stood facing the others. I'm Ash, a gnome artificier. I'm good with my tools, and I make some wonderful things. 
such as Defendor. Uh, the metallic goat stepped forward into the flickering firelight. Darpa's impressed. <laughs> he was pretty cool. You know, the way he took that one guy down. Man, that was that was good work. Ash smiled and blushed. Uh, thank you. Anyway, uh, I've always had an interest in science and machinery, but also just about the world in general. So much so that I had to get out and see it for myself. Uh, after having built Defendor three years ago, I believe, I left home to pursue my own interests, and dwarves are hailed for their engineering prowess. Uh, Daedecker bowed from his position. <laughs> we do spend enough time mining and forging. We're bound to get something right. Ash nodded. Uh, right. <laughs> after studying under the Dwarven Masters, I heard about the libraries of Bayardin, uh, where so much knowledge was kept. My curiosity peaked. I decided to head out. And I met Daedecker at the Temple of Ogier. Again, I'm just putting the spelling there, just for reference, because Norse mythology. Uh, I felt it wasn't a bad idea to get some blessing before travel, just in case. <sighs> Daedecker piped up. Uh, yes, I was ready for my own journey, and when you asked for a blessing and the light shined down upon you, as if Ogier were sending me a sign. Fang's eyes narrowed at that. She looked from Ash to Daedecker. Is that everything? She asked. A small trickle of sweat rolled down Daedecker's cheek as Fang focused on him. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, not quite. You see, we did meet at the temple, and I was preparing for my own journey for my own reasons. He exhaled heavily, standing up. Uh, believe me or not, this is the truth as I know it. Heimdall uh, spoke to me in my dream, warning me of an encroaching darkness upon the land. I was told to seek out allies against it, and as I was ready to go, I met Ash. Thing looked to Ash now. Did you know? Ash shuddered at that. Ugh. Uh... No, he he hadn't mentioned it, I swear. Darwin Bren just sat shocked at her, the new development. A chill wind swept through the camp as all eyes focused on Daedecker once more. <clears throat> uh, I was told to prepare, and that in order to repel the darkness, I need to recruit, I need to unite the people. It wasn't clear how many, so hopefully five is enough. Darb counted on his fingers, stopping when he looked at Bren. So, uh, uh, <laughs> what, what's your story? Bren stood up, hands on his hips. Count me out of this prophecy of yours. I left the life of an adventurer behind me long ago. I was a soldier in the war with the orcs 20 years ago. My fight was then. We were able to stop the bloodthirsty warriors, and we've kept some peace. I started a family. I had a daughter. I buried my wife, Helena. And I was ready to retire. I will travel with you to Bayardon. And I can even help you find your footing in the city. But I'm not a fighter. Not anymore. <clears throat> Bren sat down with a heavy sigh. The mood soured now. Fang looked over the party. Uh, right. Regardless of our feelings... We'll stay here for the evening, for the night, and continue tomorrow. Once we reach Bairdon, we can make our own decisions on decisions on the matter. I'll take the first watch. Darb, I will rouse you for the second, and then you can rouse one of the others. The party laid down to sleep, and Ash looked to Fang. <clears throat> uh, <sighs> sorry, just getting the voice is tough. <laughs> Uh, Defender can help you. Keep, Defender can help you keep watch as well. He doesn't need sleep like the rest of us. He just needs a bit of time to recharge his batteries. Fang nodded. Thank you. I appreciate the company. Defen <laughs> Fucking <laughs> sorry. Defender walked forward. I haven't done a robot voice. <laughs> Crap. Uh, 
I can keep track of time, and in rest mode, I can watch in one direction. I will. I only need to rest for four total hours per day. Thing, Fang nodded. If <laughs> see, this is all the shit switching. That's hard. Uh, if you can keep an eye to the south and east, I would appreciate that. I will watch the north and west. Let's say three hours for my shift. Darb, I will wake you when I'm done. Darb gave a thumbs up before settling down. The night was uneventful, and Fang woke Darb when her shift was over. She gently prodded him to wake. Ugh. Yeah, I'm up, I'm up. Just give me a sec. He sat up slowly, rubbing his eyes. Sleeping rough is part of the adventurer's life. You should get used to it, Fang said, standing over him. Darb nodded. Yeah, uh, you know, still pretty new to all this. Uh, thanks for the advice. I, I do appreciate it. Fing held, held out a hand to help him rise. I took a three-hour shift, so I would say about the same time for the others. Should do. Darb nodded and looked to check on his friends. I also stoked... <laughs> Fang continued... I also stoked the fire, so it should last most of your time. I'd gather some more wood before you turn in. Darb noted the small pile nearby. Uh, anything, anything else I should do? Thing smiled and put a hand on his, on his shoulder. Stay awake and keep your eyes and ears open for anything. We should be safe, but one can never be too careful. Fang turned to find a spot to lie down, but Darb stopped her. Hey, um, uh, about what Mr. Daydecker said. I, I, I know it sounds crazy, but I trust him, and I hope you can too. Fang sighed and turned to face him. Yes, I may have overreacted to that. I've met others who felt strongly and justified terrible things. I, I don't think he's like that, but I can't rule out the possibility. Regardless, I plan to travel with you all and judge for myself. Darb frowned. Yeah, I, I see your point, I guess. I just, you know, I, I just want to see the good in people, you know, uh, especially the ones I'm traveling with. Fang just looked him over. There's nothing wrong with that. I've just had bad experiences, so I'm a little biased in my thoughts. Approach any situation with some level of caution and listen to your guts. Now if you'll excuse me, I must rest. Darb sat up idly strumming his lute as he watched over the others. He couldn't help but notice a contented sigh or smile appear on his friends' faces as they slept. He looked down at the lute. At the lute. Nah, couldn't be me. Basically, you know, here, I'm saying he used Song of Rest, which usually just heals, heals, you know, some more hit points. But I thought, you know, bringing some peace to everybody would be a nice little thing, too. Again, storyteller, making stuff up. The next morning. Dedecker was on a final watch. He'd been roused when Darb finished his shift, insisting that he liked to see the rising sun and perform a light ritual to start the day. Darb thought it sounded interesting, but he was still pretty tired and needed to sleep more. Daydecker. <clears throat> one day, one day I can show you the ritual. It's not much, but a nice way to start the day. Darb smiled. Uh, I'd like that. And, uh... Uh, Mr. Daydecker, I I'm not sure about that dream of yours, but, um... But I want to help if I can. You know, uh, you seem like a... Seemed like a good guy, and I do want to help people. Dedeker smiled and grasped his hand firmly. Thanks, lad. I appreciate that. I don't rightly know what's coming, but I do know the road ahead won't be easy. Darb swallowed nervously at that. He looked toward where Fang was sleeping. I, uh... I, I talked to Fang, too. You know, I, I think she trusts you. To a degree, anyway. Um, so, uh, we should be okay on the road to Bayardin. 
Dedeker nodded, nodded solemnly. That's more than fair. As I said, I see light in all of you and trust that you'll do good with or without me. Now, off to bed with you. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, Ash roused not long before dawn. She yawned and stretched, nodding to Daydecker before checking on Defendor. <laughs> Nothing to report, Ash. All has been quiet. Fang and Darb had three hour shifts, and we are currently two hours into Daydecker's. Ash nodded. Uh, thank you. Uh, did you get your recharge time? Defendor nodded. Yes. During Darb and Daydecker ships, shifts, respectively. Ash stood up and patted Defendor's head. Ah, uh, good. She stood up and looked to Daydecker. Uh, since you all took the watch, let, since you all took watch, the least I can do is prepare a morning meal and coffee. I bet he likes cream, and she takes hers black. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Dedeker stifled a chuckle at that. I couldn't say, but I won't refuse the kindness. Ash nodded, opening... Nash... Ash nodded, then opening a side bag, started to get a few items together for meal prep. Over the next hour, she got a small pot, a small pot cooking, and did some light foraging for edible items. By the time she returned, Fang was sitting up idly chatting with Daydecker. Bren had moved the pot from the fire to a stone to cool, and Dar was was sat up rubbing his eyes. The whistle of the kettle had woken him. She set down what she'd gathered, and Fang offered up some jerky she had to the others. Darf had a loaf of bread to share. Fang sighed when Ash informed her she didn't have any tea, prompting a, prompting a smirk from Daydecker. She, lo <laughs> she looked to him. I'll have you know it's very calming. See him practice the narrator again. Uh, she explained. Ash said she would try to keep some tea leaves handy for the future. <clears throat> the mood in the camp was improved from last night. The group quickly ate their breakfast before heading out. As far as I can tell, we should be at Nihal by a little after midday. I haven't been recently, so I'm not sure how things are, but it's a fine village. It's been a fine village in the past. Fang nodded. <clears throat> <laughs> Alright, uh, we'll continue straight to the village, and then I believe you should take the lead as they know you. Or we'll resupply for at least the evening and plan our next move from there. Dedeker smiled. Sounds a good plan to me. Darb nodded, hap Darb nodded happily, and Ash nodded her approval as well. And that is where I'm going to end this session, folks. <laughs> Again, it was a nice bit of roleplay. I'm playing so many characters and a narrator, so please be kind if you make any comments or suggestions about how I should do better voices. Um, with that said, I'm going to get into final thoughts. And then that will be the video. So, alright, um, so I'm probably going to be reading mostly from this, just so you know. So, don't have me reading. It's hard to do all this stuff, although I might add a little bit. Cool, alright, um, so, you know, I had some fun with storytelling here. Um, I got to establish that while we're all together, it's not going to be just a, oh, hey, we're all best friends, you know, like after hanging out for five minutes. You know, there's some conflict and character development. Uh, Fang's backstory reveals where she's been, and I hope it came across that she's guarded, but does want company. You know, because she knows she can't necessarily go it alone. I didn't get into, you know, her escape from the gladiator camp. <clears throat> you know, um, but maybe down the line I will. I don't have all the details figured out exactly, but basically, you know, she and a few others were attempting to escape, and... You know, not everyone made it out. Um, it also explains why she's so wary of people and calls Daydecker out for keeping his dream secret. I was also trying to do some acting a bit of, like, there's something going on with Daydecker and Ash that they're not really saying, so... If that came across cool, if not, it wasn't entirely there. And it's not a big deal, it's just, oh hey, here's prophecy. But anyway, 
<laughs> other thoughts. Um, you know, as for Daydecker, you know, I had to do some quick research on finding a god for him to follow. Um, as a dwarf, I was I was drawn toward Norse mythology. Also, God of War Ragnarok came out recently. I've been watching a Let's Play of that. It looks awesome and cool. Just saying. <laughs> also, dwarves exist there. You know, um, it, it's it's better than nothing. Okay, I at least had a reason, a stupid one, but a reason. Um. Thankfully, you know, the player's handbook has an appendix for pantheons of gods with domains, alignments, and all that good stuff. So you can make your right choice on a god. If you don't know any because you don't know a lot of religious stuff. Like me. I don't know nothing. Except a bit of Greek stuff. And now a little bit of more Norse. Thank you, video games. <laughs> Do not follow video games as a source of, of information for anything. Yep. Good disclaimer. Anyway, um, I was originally wanting Heimdall. You know, as for some reason, I thought he was a dwarf. Again, I don't know where they came from. Just maybe he's a dwarf. I don't know. Uh, he's not, as far as I know. And a quick internet search gave me that information. Thank you, Wikipedia. Not good for research papers, but good for hey, I'm making a little video on YouTube and just talking casually about stuff. Remember, find your facts in reliable sources and places, people, and cite them in your papers. Duh. <laughs> um, I settled on Light Domain. Anyway, uh, Odur, O-D-U-R, is the god of light and the sun, and also has some connection to travelers, which seems fitting for an adventurer. Uh, Heimdall is watchfulness and loyalty, hence the dream involving him, uh, because I know, because I guess he's also known as the Herald. Like, he's supposed to blow his horn to signal Ragnarok. And I think to signal other, like, impending things. But, yeah. Um, crap. This blows, yeah. Uh, there are several gods, you know, and there are a few other gods associated with light. You know, Odra stood out to me. And there are a few others that I liked as well. But I feel like, I feel like Odra's a good start point. And then the others can reach out as well. And, heck, maybe even from other mythoses. You know, like Apollo from uh, Apollo or whatever the Egyptian one is. Or other ones. <laughs> so he might be getting stuff from one person or another person. And yeah, like, you know, a bunch of their gods cover several things as well. Like there's one of light and fertility. You know, light and traveling. Uh, light, loyalty, etc. So yeah. It's a nice open thing. <sighs> um... And then also, sticking you know, with his dream, I like the story of darkness coming. Obviously, darkness is the opposite of light, and it represents, you know, bad stuff. You know, and it being a vague thing here is nice potential foreshadowing, you know, for whatever I come up with. Because I'm not 100% set on ideas yet. You know, he kept it to himself because it may come off as crazy to some. You know, like people who have, you know, spoken with God or heard his voice or something like that. Like... You know, or Cthulhu, or other characters, just saying. <sighs> um, and he's drawn to the others because he sees the light within them. You know, or if something happens, he can see light in other people. Hopeful hopefully, he does not die. <laughs> so, I gotta ask myself, please don't kill the character. I will be annoyed. I will have to make another healer. <sighs> um... Although, in an actual campaign, I, I think he'd be, you know, an NPC that talks about the dream stuff when you meet him. You know, you're, like, entering the city, and, like, this priest just stops and just stares at your party, just, like, waving a hand, just like, oh. You know. Um, but, yeah. <laughs> For now, he's part of my regular group of people, because I like the character, and I had a cleric once. So, yeah. Um... And then one of the other things that I'm going to work on for later is, you know, what keeps them together, like, after they get to Bayardin. Obviously, like, right now, yeah, we got to get there. But, you know, Ash wants to go to the library. Daydecker's got his vague quest. Dar wants to do good things, so he might be with Daydecker. But Fang is still, like, wary of the situation. So, I got to work on that. I have some ideas, you know, which, way, which I will talk about in the future. Uh, basically, the short version is, <laughs> uh, they might have a few missions that cross a certain criminal kingpin, and basically, they painted bullseyes on their backs, so 
you know, sticking together is kind of a nice idea. You know, having people who for sure have your back is better than nothing. And I also may have stolen that from, um, other stuff. I'm thinking of one piece specifically in Robin's backstory. Potential spoiler alert. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, da da da. Uh, speaking of the village, you know, that they're trying to reach, uh, Baird and ultimately, but Kneehold right now. My goodness, coming up with names and backstories and such is hard work. I think, hey, I don't know how legit DMs do it. Those just came to me, and honestly, I'm not sure what sounds more village-like and what sounds more city-like. So, as a warning, if I DM for you and you ask me a bunch of, you ask me to name a bunch of stuff, my brain might melt. <laughs> just a heads up. Uh, the town and village names just came up from I don't know where, and yeah, I was stressing over them for some time, so just let me have them. <laughs> um, and then in other world development stuff, I can start making a basic map now, establishing where things are in relation to one another. You know, rather than just, rather than the detail stuff. So, you know, like, docking back to the future, please excuse the crudity of the model, like, I'm just trying to set this stuff up. You guys can add in details later. I'm just trying to establish things <laughs> exist. Um, let's see, other things. Um, we also established Darb as a new adventure looking to be a hero, and, you know, kind of the wide-eyed rookie cliché. One that I've played a number of times, I've done it very well, I really like it. It's a nice, comfortable place. <sighs> um, yeah, uh, as for Ash, as for Ash, the other character that I haven't really talked so much about yet, um, she's doing her own thing, uh, basically a scholar, you know, taking notes and being pretty introverted. Hopefully I can make her a bit more dynamic as we go on, but I think she'll be like, you know, the Egon, or basically just the person who may not know everything, but at least has some, like, base knowledge of, like, some of the weirder stuff we might come across. Like, um, okay, I can't think of an example, but she's probably going to be the person who gets all of the intelligence, arcana, history, etc. checks, you know, but date Ecker or two. Uh, Fang and Darb will not, I don't think. They won't get it, but they can make the attempt. Like, you know, Darb might have heard a story or two. And Fang, well, she's not concerned with history. Period. <laughs> um, and then also, sticking with Ash, uh, just talking about Defendor. Uh, he is a, he is a steel defender. It is, you know, an artificier thing that they get at third level. Uh, you know, living construct, construct. So basically, I might steal some things from how Warforged work. Like, um, you know, whenever they're in their rest period, they can, you know, see in the direction in front of them, but they're not active. So, yeah. Uh, and last but not least, my NPC, Bren. Uh, he talked about the War with the Orcs, which I don't think I said it, actually, was about 20 to 25 years ago. Darb is somewhere in his 20s. Maybe there's a connection. I, like, I had the idea before. I don't know if it's going to be connected here. It might just be connected in my own side story that I'm doing, that I've talked about. Um, and again, if we get to get him to Bayerden, you know, he can get the team in contact with someone to get them at least a place to stay, you know, maybe get their foot in the door for, like, oh, hey, we can get you, like, financed and work and ready to face off with, you know, whatever bad stuff comes their way, because... Obviously, they're the heroes of this D&D story, so they're going to have to do a lot of stuff. <sighs> Man. Done with notes now. So, yeah, that was an experience. Um, like you saw, trying to do narrator and character voices is a challenge. And trying to change inflections and tones enough that it's clear that someone else is talking is a challenge. <laughs> Especially doing it on the fly with six pages of notes. It should be easy in, easier in the future, you know, um, with the other care with the next section, with the next session, because I'm not, you know, just making this, I'm not reading out what I wrote. I'm going to present them the scenarios. The characters are going to make their own decisions. Like, oh, hey, we should do this. We should do that. So I can be a bit more loosey-goosey, I hope. Please let me be more loosey-goosey. 
I'm asking myself. Please. <laughs> uh, but, um, I'm still having fun with this. Uh, like, you know, these things are going to take some time, so I'm never, ever going to give you a, I'm going to get this out by this time thing. Um, I, and it's also helped me to, like, come up with brainstorming some other ideas for my story. You know, with Darb and a few other different characters. Then I might bring some of those elements into here and vice versa. And maybe I'll start a series of just talking about that stuff. Maybe. We'll see what I feel like doing. I, I seem to have ADD with YouTube video topics. But that is another story to tell. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I will leave you with, you know, my classic closing line. Have fun, stay safe, keep hydrated, and of course remember, every character has a story to tell. I'm Valiant Bradley James, the new DM, several characters in this trial party, and a bunch of crazy, wacky characters with hopefully different voices. Until next time, peace.